20th century Irish art and showing the, um, the significance of the church. So part of what we're doing in, in producing a plan, a conservation plan for the church is, is the important thing is to understand its significance, to understand, uh, to get to the bottom of every aspect of the church um, that, that is important, whether it be artistic, architectural, technical, and um, social, cultural, all of these values are, are all important. Um, uh, architectural conservation poses a very new concept in Ireland. We have had architectural heritage legislation for, for the protection of architectural heritage since 2000 only, so literally only in the last 16 years. And um, St Mary's is a protected structure. So, um, and really for, for many reasons, but I suppose it's, it's easy to see why after having gone through tracing the, the development of the, of the building over time and looking at the, the artworks that it contains. And so, um, but this, this, this whole process that in conservation that has gone through, that where you look, you have a whole load of experts looking at different areas of, of, um, of the building. You look at people looking, various experts looking at the fabric, looking at different parts of the fabric of the building. Um, and you have all of these people coming together and, and really, uh, you know, pooling, pooling the, the, uh, the information and the knowledge. And it's only then that decisions can be made that are right for the building and that can ensure that its significance is retained while obviously ensuring that the building continues on into the future. Um, so the ceiling collapse of July 2015 is what sparked, I suppose, this whole process um, and uh, one of the, um, of the reasons why the hoarding is up, as you're probably all aware, is to ensure the safety of the occupants during the, um, while this process of investigation is going on and understanding the building is, is continuing. Um, this gives you an idea of the condition of the side aisle roofs um, which has led to the, the partial collapse of the ceilings. Um, great area of view showing the bubbling up of the asphalt on the, the left hand side, the mm -hmm. flat roofs. So this is where the, um, the issues are, are, are stemming from. It's another amazing image of, mm -hmm. of the asphalt. Just for um, really interest, the, the, the roof is in really good condition in general. Um, and this is a, is a view of the, the steel trusses um, and the, the barrel vault uh, underneath the, uh, the rafters there. Um, and that's the new, the new section of the church, um, a suspended ceiling, a very different method of construction, but also in very good condition. Um, the slates are all in very good condition. There's very few that have uh, or slipped or broken. Uh, so one of the things, sorry about this being on the side, this is one of the, the, the transept uh, stained glass windows and it's an example of an area, a part that we were looking at. There's a few issues that, that have to be looked at. This is one of them. Um, the storm glazing. Storm glazing is there. It, it's controversial really how you approach protection of um, windows from, from weather and from vandalism. And there are uh, the Heritage Council has published a book on care and conservation of, of stained glass windows, which, which I suppose puts forward a few um, ways of, of, of protecting them. And still, ideas are are, 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 are being looked at for, for how how best to to protect protect windows. And you have um, obviously the, the issue with this is that you fall pieces falling down. There's a bit that's fallen down. So really, it's, it's looking at ensuring that, that whatever goes up is, is, is uh, sturdy. Mind you, we are living in the West Ireland. And, uh, mm -hmm. We have phenomenal winds here. And, um, but having said that, whatever goes up in its place will have to work well for the window in terms of the, uh, the conditions that, that, that are set up between the glazing and, and the actual stained glass itself um, to ensure that, that you, you, know, you don't actually end up causing further damage to, or damage to, the, to the glass to the, the lead work through condensation or um, or overheating, any of those issues. So it's something that has to be carefully considered. The third issue with the church is the, the apse walls. Um, and again, with conservation, everything is supposed to be looked at carefully to see where the source 
of the problem is this is caused by uh, moisture movement in the fabric which is uh, carrying building salts to the surface which crystallize and then form this efflorescence. And really it's a case of, of, of understanding how all of the different elements of the building are interacting with each other um, and understanding the, the source of the problem and then um, fixing it, managing it. The, uh, some other image there of, the, of what we're still trying to, we have a, a, an expert stone uh, person who's analysing the material to understand its exact co uh, constituents, so it, is it marble, is it steliola? And it's really important before anything is done, before a decision is made to do anything with any element of the building, that it's, that it's fully understood um, to ensure that no further damage will be done through, uh, through repair 